Hello, Universe Explorers. Welcome back to our channel where we dive into the mysteries of space and the latest in astrophysics. Today, we're tackling a groundbreaking discovery that's causing waves across the scientific community. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, NASA's most powerful telescope yet, has just delivered some astonishing data about the rate at which our universe is expanding. But there's a twist, it's not exactly what we expected. Stay tuned as we unpack these findings and explore what it means for our understanding of the cosmos. The James Webb Space Telescope has just delivered some astonishing results, and they've thrown a wrench into our understanding of the cosmos. It appears the universe is expanding much faster than anticipated, deepening a conundrum known as the Hubble Tension. This isn't just a small blip in data, it's potentially a major crisis in cosmology. Originally, astronomers speculated that previous discrepancies in the expansion rate might be resolved with advanced technology from next-generation observatories like James Webb. However, instead of solving these mysteries, Webb's findings have intensified them, suggesting we might be missing a critical piece of the cosmic puzzle. So, what exactly is the Hubble tension? Why has it become such a pressing issue for astronomers worldwide? And what did the James Webb Space Telescope uncover that confirms we are indeed facing a cosmological crisis? More intriguingly, what new physics might emerge as we strive to unravel this mystery? Let's dive into the depths of the universe's secrets and explore what's at stake in redefining our place in the cosmos. To truly grasp the magnitude of the biggest crisis in modern cosmology, let's journey back a century to the 1920s. During this era, two prominent astronomers, Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis, found themselves locked in a profound disagreement known as the Great Debate. The crux of their contention? The very scale of the universe. The question they debated might seem almost trivial to us today, was the Milky Way the entirety of the universe, or were there other galaxies beyond it, suggesting a much vaster cosmos? At the time, this was a revolutionary idea. Astronomers then believed that the universe consisted solely of the Milky Way. Even when observing objects like the Andromeda Galaxy, which we now know to be a separate galaxy, these were thought to be mere star systems or spiral nebulae within our own galaxy. The debate hinged on whether these spiral nebulae were inside the Milky Way or far beyond its boundaries. Shapley argued that the Milky Way was about 300,000 light years in diameter, encompassing all known star systems, essentially, that it was the universe itself. Curtis, on the other hand, contended that these nebulae were independent galaxies, much like our Milky Way, existing far outside its limits. This pivotal moment in astronomy set the stage for a monumental shift in our understanding of the universe's true expanse. On April 26, 1920, a pivotal moment in astronomy unfolded that would forever change our understanding of the cosmos. This was not just any academic debate, it was a dramatic clash of visions regarding the scale of the universe and the true nature of nebulae. Despite the intense exchange of ideas, the debate between Harlow Shapley and Heber Curtis concluded without a decisive outcome, leaving the astronomical community divided. However, the resolution to their debate would come not from either participant, but from the groundbreaking work of Edwin Hubble. In the 1920s, using the most advanced telescope of his era located at Mount Wilson Observatory, Hubble embarked on a journey that would unravel the mysteries of the cosmos. Hubble's extraordinary discovery came while observing Cepheid variable stars in the Andromeda Nebula, which was at the time considered a part of the Milky Way. By calculating the distance to these stars, notably the Cepheid variable known as V1, Hubble determined that Andromeda was about 1 million light-years away, nearly three times farther than Shapley's estimate of the Milky Way's size. This revelation confirmed Curtis's hypothesis. The spiral nebulae were not merely parts of the Milky Way but were independent galaxies in their own right. Although Hubble's initial distance measurements were less than what we recognize today, his work conclusively demonstrated that the universe was far more expansive than anyone had previously imagined. This discovery not only resolved a significant astronomical debate but also opened a new chapter in the study of the universe, revealing its staggering scale and beauty. As Edwin Hubble delved deeper into the mysteries of the cosmos, 
he stumbled upon a groundbreaking pattern that would reshape our understanding of the universe. Observing distant galaxies, he noticed they were all moving away from us, and intriguingly, the farther they were, the faster they seemed to recede. This observation led to a simple yet profound relationship, the velocity, v, at which a galaxy moves away is directly proportional to its distance, d, from us. This relationship is succinctly expressed. This discovery birthed what is now known as the Hubble constant, one of the most debated figures in astronomy. The Hubble constant isn't just a number, it's a key that unlocks the rate at which our universe is expanding. To put it simply, it measures how fast a galaxy is receding from us for every megaparsec MPC, of distance, where one megaparsec is approximately 3.26 million light-years. Let's visualize this with an example. Imagine two galaxies, Galaxy A is 1 megaparsec away, and Galaxy B is 2 megaparsecs away. If the Hubble constant is 70 km per second per megaparsec, then Galaxy A would be moving away from us at 70 km per second. Galaxy B, being twice as far, would be receding at a speed of 140 km per second. This simple relation, initially observed by Hubble, is now a cornerstone in our quest to comprehend the universe's expansion, further highlighted by recent discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope. At 140 km per second, because it's 2 megaparsecs away, we calculate the recession speed by simply doubling the Hubble constant of 70 km per second per megaparsec. This expansion isn't due to galaxies physically moving through space, rather, it's the fabric of space itself stretching. This is what the Hubble constant reveals, how rapidly the universe is expanding. You might wonder where the complication lies in this seemingly straightforward process. Just measure the distance to a galaxy, d, and its velocity of recession, v, plug in the values, and voila, you derive the Hubble constant. But it's not as simple as it sounds. While calculating a galaxy's recession speed is relatively straightforward, determined by its redshift and a basic formula, accurately measuring the distance to a galaxy millions of light years away is fraught with challenges. Astronomers have devised a clever method using a special class of stars known as Cepheid variables. These stars have a unique characteristic, they pulsate in a very regular pattern, brightening and dimming predictably. In the early 1900s, Henrietta Swan Leavitt meticulously studied numerous Cepheid variables in the Magellanic Clouds and uncovered a pivotal relationship between their pulsation periods and their luminosities. This breakthrough provided a reliable method to measure vast cosmic distances, anchoring our quest to pinpoint the expansion rate of the universe. The pulsation rate of a Cepheid variable star is intrinsically linked to its true brightness, or luminosity. To put it simply, the longer a star pulsates, the brighter it is. Calculating the distance to a galaxy involves a three-step method centered around these remarkable stars. First, astronomers pinpoint a Cepheid variable within a distant galaxy and meticulously record the duration of its pulsation cycle, the time it takes for the star to brighten and then dim again. This period is key because it's directly related to the star's intrinsic brightness, allowing us to calculate its absolute magnitude. For example, if a star completes its pulsation cycle in 30 days, its absolute magnitude, or true brightness, would be 4.85. The second step is to compare this calculated true brightness with how bright the star appears from Earth, its apparent brightness, which can be measured using telescopes. Imagine the star appears to have an apparent brightness of 24. Here's a fun fact to give you perspective. The dimmest stars visible to the naked eye from Earth have a brightness limit of about 6, meaning the star in our example is roughly 16 million times fainter than the faintest stars we can see unaided. The third and final step involves the brightness-distance relationship. This is where some fascinating physics comes into play, allowing us to derive the distance to the galaxy by comparing the star's true brightness to how bright it appears from our vantage point. This method not only unveils the vast distances across our universe but also underscores the incredible power of light as a tool for cosmic exploration. Here's where the cosmic magic unfolds. In astronomy, how bright it appears from Earth using our telescopes. 
Finally, with the distance modulus equation in hand, we can determine the star's distance from us, which in this case is 5.9 megaparsecs. Using just this single star from a special class, we've managed to measure the distance to the galaxy in which it resides. But Cepheid variables aren't the only tools in our cosmic toolbox. Astronomers also use Type IA supernovae to measure distances to their host galaxies. While Cepheid variables are effective for measuring distances up to a few tens of megaparsecs, Type IA supernovae can be used for scales reaching a few hundred megaparsecs. Sometimes, astronomers use both methods together to cross-verify distances. Thanks to these advanced methods and measurements, astronomers have converged on a value of around 73.4 km per second per megaparsec for the Hubble constant, further fine-tuning our understanding of the universe's expansion rate. Cepheid variables have been invaluable in determining cosmic distances, but how confident are astronomers about the accuracy of these measurements? The truth is, there was some initial uncertainty, prompting scientists to seek validation through cosmological models. If these models confirmed their measurements, it would reinforce our understanding of the expanding universe. However, discrepancies would suggest a significant gap in our cosmic comprehension. Enter the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, the oldest light in the universe and a faint glow from the Big Bang itself, pervading the entire cosmos. This relic from just 380,000 years post-Big Bang, a time before stars and galaxies even existed, offers a unique snapshot of the early universe. Unlike the Cosmic Distance Ladder, a series of steps astronomers use to measure distances, the CMB provides an independent verification method. It doesn't rely on the same assumptions as measurements from Cepheids or supernovae. To study the CMB, astronomers utilize satellites like WMAP and the Planck spacecraft, which map its minute temperature fluctuations across the sky. These fluctuations are crucial, they mirror the density variations in the early universe and relate to key cosmological parameters, including the expansion rate of the universe. This method allows for an invaluable cross-check of the results obtained from Cepheids and supernovae, reinforcing or challenging our current understanding based on robust, independent cosmic evidence. When astronomers set out to calculate the Hubble constant using two different methods, they anticipated consistent results. Instead, they stumbled upon an unexpected twist that would ignite one of the most significant debates in modern cosmology. The value derived from the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, method came in around 67 km per second per megaparsec, noticeably lower than the values obtained from studies involving Cepheid variables and supernovae. This might seem like a minor discrepancy, but it's statistically significant and exceeds the expected margins of error for such precise measurements. This conflict, known as the Hubble tension, highlights a fundamental discord between the rate of expansion observed in our local universe and that inferred from the conditions of the early universe. Amid this uncertainty, astronomers harbored hope. They speculated that the observed amidst celestial crowds. This clustering complicates the measurement of a Cepheid's true brightness, thereby affecting the accuracy of distance estimations. A striking example of this challenge can be seen in the observations of a specific Cepheid variable located in Galaxy NGC 5584. Images captured by the Hubble Space Telescope's Wide Field Camera 3 showed this star as a blurry spot surrounded by numerous other celestial objects. In contrast, thanks to its superior infrared capabilities, the James Webb Space Telescope captured images of the same Cepheid with much greater clarity, distinctly separating it from its neighboring stars. Scientists have closely studied several Cepheids in two particular galaxies, NGC 4258 and NGC 5584. NGC 4258 is a relatively nearby galaxy with a well-established distance. Meanwhile, NGC 5584, which hosted the Type IA supernova SN 2007 AF, is a more distant galaxy that contains these vital variable stars. The difference in the clarity and detail of the images from the two telescopes underscores the ongoing challenges and refinements in cosmic measurement techniques.
In a groundbreaking study involving more than 320 Cepheid variable stars from galaxies NGC 4258 and NGC 5584, researchers harnessed the capabilities of both the Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescopes to undertake a detailed analysis and comparison. The study meticulously cataloged each star's position within NGC 4258, with pulsation periods ranging from 18 to 41 days. A visual from the research paper clearly delineates the findings, Hubble's images, marked in black, show a crowded field, whereas Webb's images, highlighted in magenta, offer a less congested view thanks to their higher resolution. This stark contrast in image clarity led to the research paper being fittingly titled, Crowded No More. Additionally, the study featured image patches from both telescopes for NGC 5584, covering Cepheids with periods from 39 to 43 days, typically indicating brighter stars. Using these observations, researchers established a period-magnitude relationship for both galaxies, presented in two separate panels. The data points highlighted in red, derived from the web filter, contrast with the gray dots, which represent observations from the Hubble Space Telescope filter. What does this comparison tell us? The alignment of the red data points with the established trend showcases Webb's enhanced ability to observe and measure these vital cosmic beacons, bringing new clarity and precision to our understanding of the universe's expansion. In an illuminating discovery, the analysis of the gray and red data points from the James Webb Space Telescope demonstrated a consistent trend, but with a noteworthy reduction in the standard deviation for both galaxies. This lower standard deviation signifies a reduction in measurement errors, a trend distinctly evident in the web data. To validate these findings, the research team expanded their study to include larger samples of Cepheid variables and supernovae across six different galaxies. Surprisingly, their results were consistent across the board, reinforcing the reality of the Hubble tension. This consistency allowed the team to confidently rule out measurement error as the root cause of the Hubble tension. Instead, the observations made by the James Webb Space Telescope have solidified the value of the Hubble constant, thereby confirming a profound crisis in cosmology. It turns out that the Hubble tension isn't due to technological shortcomings or uncertainties in measurement. Rather, it underscores a significant gap in our fundamental understanding of the universe. With the James Webb Space Telescope's confirmation of the Hubble tension, we're left with more questions than answers. Are we possibly making an error in how we measure distances? Or is there a deeper flaw in our understanding of the cosmic microwave background? These discrepancies between our observations and theoretical models signal a potential frontier for new physics, challenging us to rethink our grasp of the cosmos. Welcome to Blessovia Science TV where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blisovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe, live Q, and a sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live Q and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers. Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today, and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.